CRISPR is a naturally occurring defense mechanism, which was originally discovered in the cells of bacteria. CRISPR stands for clustered, regularly, interspaced, short, palindromic repeats. This defense mechanism allows the bacteria to copy and paste a section of an invading virus's DNA to become immune to it. While this itself is remarkable, what's even more interesting about this is the fact that it can be used to edit DNA. As for how the system works, it all depends on the protein known as Cas9, which implements guide RNAs to splice the DNA sequence, carrying it into the nucleus of the bacteria so the bacteria can be immune from that virus in the future. The way we can use this to edit genes is by having Cas9 target an area we choose, and replace or cut a section of the DNA sequence. Using this system, we can cure diseases like cancer and create immunities to other diseases or viruses. CRISPR was first reported in 1987 by Francisco Mojita at the University of Alicante in Spain. Through his research, he reported that these immune defense systems shared a common set of features. In 2005, Dr. Mojita's work led him to successfully hypotheticize that CRISPR is an adaptive immune system. The next few years after this discovery would be a whirlwind of advances in the CRISPR field, as scientists soon became able to understand how it cuts the DNA precisely. And through the research of many scientists, including Jennifer Doudnet Cal and Feng Zong at MIT, scientists soon became able to understand how CRISPR can be harnessed to edit the human genome. Research still continues today and is exponentially growing. Since 2011, there's been a 1,453% increase in the mention of CRISPR in the title or abstract of scientific papers. CRISPR has opened up many opportunities in science and in other places. Here's Nicole Pachin to explain. Um, it can be used to edit the genes of living organisms. So I think that that could be beneficial for um, like reducing the burden of disease, maybe in cancer or infectious diseases. Specifically, in infectious diseases, we could use CRISPR to maybe change some of the organisms that are affecting people, and that would reduce the burden of infectious diseases. But you don't necessarily need to use it in human cells. You can use it in tomato plants, right, to get tomatoes that are bigger and that stay fresh longer. Besides what Nicole said, CRISPR has been used to edit the genes of apples to resist browning, onto flowers to change the color of them, and most importantly, into pigs to reduce the amount of fat in their meat to reduce obesity. Also, my father, Dr. Sanjay Desai, has been using it to try to find a cure to malaria, a disease which 280 million people are infected by every year. Even though CRISPR has created so many opportunities in science, there are some problems with it, including the issue of the off-target effect. The human genome is three billion base pairs long, and a gene which you tell Cas9 to cut may be repeated or close to repeated many times. Here is Mira Garriga of the NIH to explain. Many, many places where you're cutting that are not just where the place that you're trying to cut is. Those uh, mutations can lead to other effects that we don't want. And those are called off-target effects. And you can imagine, especially when we're dealing with human beings, that's incredibly important. We want to make sure that we are maintaining normal human physiology. We don't want to be disrupting something else. So that's a big pitfall, but it's also something that people are working on right now. And I think the Doudna lab um, at Cal, who was the first lab to sort of introduce um, the use of Cas9 in, in vitro, they recently published a paper showing that you can basically modify the system a bit and decrease the amount of off-target effects fourfold. With studies like the ones by the Doudna lab, we may soon be able to reduce the number of off-target effects with CRISPR. Even with this great new technology that could revolutionize the way we treat disease and cure genetic diseases, CRISPR has a history of an ethical debate. There are some serious ethical questions, such as whether we should use this process in humans and whether it is okay for people to design their babies before they're born. Is a possibility that people could edit their child in the embryonic stage. Even though we do not yet possess the information on which DNA sequences control intelligence level, would it be fair if there was a race of modified children who were designed to be better? It is these questions that Dr. Crater Potter goes into. 
when you are manipulating the human genome, what does that mean exactly? Should we even be doing that and dabbling with those kinds of scientific conundrums? Are we even allowed to? Depending on who you talk to, an atheist or someone involved with Christianity, for example, editing the human genome is something that you should never absolutely be done. So therein lies many different ethical problems that could be happening here, eventually that we could be looking forward to hearing more about in science. Depending on who you ask, CRISPR could be the greatest thing to happen in science or a monstrous process that should not be made legal. All things considered, we should be very careful in where we use this new technology, as it could create genetically modified people, destroy variety, or be used to create viruses that are invincible to any known cure. This kind of editing that can happen in the wrong hands could lead to even more dangerous diseases or viral outbreaks or something that we have no possible notion that could even be happening. This kind of danger can pose a great threat, but some say the gain may be worth it as CRISPR can decimate diseases and eliminate harmful genetic functions such as cancer. With everything that CRISPR can do, it would be foolish not to use it, but it's important to use it wisely. The unintended consequences could cause as much havoc and destruction as much as the benefits cause good. After all, science is a tool. Only the wilder can choose what to use it for.